Hey there, finalists. Welcome to episode 19 of The Final Guys, where tonight we are going back to the wonderful days of yesteryear, 1974, and Toby Hooper's original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which is the one you should watch and not the disaster that's Leatherface that's out now. I am Hunter Shea, joined by my cohorts, Jack and PZ. <laughs> Jason Brands. My office reeks of marijuana right now. <laughs> wow. My neighbor must be smoking a gigantic joint because Jesus Christ. We have one of those too. It just permeates through the wall. <laughs> it's crazy how bad it smells in there. <laughs> it's funny because sometimes my kids walk in, but like, can we give him money to get better weed? <laughs> this this shit's rank. <laughs> That's funny. This mirror smells like cocaine to me. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to sniff it again. So anyway, guys, uh, we are here. I am uh, battling illness, but I'm going to power through it for you. So Jack, take the baton. Give us something that Jason and I can get really pissed off about, please. I'm going to start with something you're going to get psyched about. This may actually cure what ails you. Mm. Right before I logged in to talk to you guys, I saw that the Creep 2 trailer has hit. Oh. Ooh, so, the, the the good creep. The good creep with uh, Mark Duplass. Uh, comes out at the end of October, like 24th. So it, the trailer looks very promising, and there's a familiar face in it that you're we're probably hoping to see. So uh, not just his face, but a animal face that you were hoping to see. Peach Fuzz. Peach Fuzz is, makes an appearance. So uh, I was very excited. I was just on Twitter. And I look at something like, oh, Creep 2, oh my god. So I quickly watched it. I still say, Jack, we should watch that movie together doing Tubby Time and film that sucker. And you keep turning me down. I just, I'm worried that the water's going to get too cold. <laughs> and I don't, I don't like the way I think you'd warm the water up. <laughs> <laughs> I've been drinking a lot of PBR. Here it comes. <laughs> You ever see Strange Brew when they're stuck in the... In the uh, I always thought that drowning in beer would be heaven. This isn't heaven. This sucks. Oh, you hoser. <laughs> All right. So you happy about Creep 2? I am. All right. It's too plastic. Well, I have something to be even happier about. The Am Amityville The Awakening, the long-awaited <laughs> movie. <laughs> That was supposed to be out in, I know the last time it was supposed to be out was June. Yeah, this thing has kept being uh, delayed. It's got Bella Thorne, who's the, uh, what, who's the girl from um, the Black Coat's daughter? Emma Roberts? Yeah. She's Emma Roberts Light. Oh, my um, kids hate her. <laughs> she's she's from some Disney thing or something. I don't know. Whatever. So she stars in it. Well, it's going to be released in October. October, tw but. Okay, here it is. Okay. It's going to be released in theaters on October 28th, but from October 12th through October, November 8th, you can watch Amityville The Awakening free on Google Play. What? So, I, I don't know they if you have to pay for Google Play. Guy. I don't know if it's a subscription thing or if it's a free thing, but Amityville The Awakening, you don't have to go to the theater to see it. I know you were clamoring to run out to see this in the theater. Uh, <laughs> I was. <laughs> Because I hate myself. Wow, that is a weird release strategy. Well, it's like the new Star Trek show. They showed the first episode on TV, and now the rest of it you have to watch on like a CBS on demand kind of thing. And I'm like, who the hell's going to go watch that? Like, are you kidding me? And you have to pay for it, I'm sure. Um, yeah, I guess so. I'm not paying for CBS. Oh, yeah, hit the bricks. It's one of those where you either have to pay for it or you have to have cable and then use your cable subscription to log in or something. But it's like CBS is free. Why would I do that? They're well, using, I, I, I noticed they're doing a new thing in the network. So well, if there's a show that they're really pushing that you want to watch, they'll charge you a buck ninety nine for a show you could have watched for free a couple of days before. And then if you wait a week, it's free. Ooh, can I see the next episode, the new episode of Bull early? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so I'm dumb. not going out of my way to watch a CBS show. Um, so anyway, quick trivia. What's the address of the uh, Amityville house? 
Oh my god, I've been there. I feel like you wouldn't know this. I wouldn't know it if I wasn't looking right at it. It's uh oh, oh crap. Forget it. One twelve Ocean Avenue. Ocean Avenue. I was I was thinking oyster. Yes. I think there's oyster. I drove by it once too, a long time ago. Yeah, it was there in like May or June, taking pictures like a lunatic. Um, the next piece of news is that the It sequel has a release date. It's going to be coming out on September sixth of two thousand nineteen. Oh damn it. I was hoping for a fast turnaround, but that would probably make it suck, so I shouldn't complain too much. Listen, I heard one rumor that they were going to stretch this into three movies because of the success. And I'm like, do not hop at this, please. Mm. The hop, That's the best example of it. Those last, was it the last two that were terrible? Ugh. I can't even remember them. I disliked them They're so, so much. bad. I had a, was it you and I talking where I was like, what's worse, the Hobbit movies or the prequels, the Star Wars? I think the Hobbit movies are worse. Mm. I think so too, actually. Wow, that says a lot. I didn't yeah. even bother watching those. I, I watched them once. I have like all the Lord of the Rings movies, the original DVDs, and then the extended DVDs that came out, and I love it. I don't own any of the Hobbit movies. I saw each one of them once in the theater, and then I've never revisited them. I have no interest. I, I almost resent them. <laughs> you know what I would love to do, and it's impossible to do it. I would love to find out exactly how many huge fans of it there are looking forward to the sequel, right? So we have that baseline number today. And then when it comes out, how many of them died in the two years that they waited for the sequel? <laughs> and then we could, have, we could bet on the number. You know, that's a, that's a really interesting idea. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> I just said that apparently the drinking game is ongoing again in the chat. Oh my so. God. <laughs> they were Wait, complaining that's that we weren't using our staples enough so there you go jack do you need to know what yours is yes this week i don't know and or reboots ah let me see what i got here oh my god and god damn it is mine so wait a and minute we know jason's is really interesting reboot and what or solid i don't know <laughs> i don't know exactly <laughs> okay well it's like it's like we have people scripting the show now now we can't even say what we want to say we're stuck with this. We pit, we bitch about these studios doing what the masses want. We have six people watching right now, and we're tailoring our show to it. <laughs> God damn it! I'll tell you what I'd like to reboot is this show. That's a solid idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> okay, so the last piece of news is... I'm sure you're all familiar with I Spit on Your Grave. I've seen all the originals and all the remakes. That's right. There was an original, which was, uh, what year was that? 76? 78. Close. And, and then there was a reboot or a remake. There was I Spit on Your Grave 2, and then there were three I Spit on Your Grave movies that happened in the last like eight years or something. I have watched none of those. They're good, believe it or not. I saw the, the, the remake... And it was actually pretty good. I don't know if I saw any of the ones after that. Well, the original 1978 is getting a sequel with the woman who was in the original one. So Camille Keaton uh, is coming back as the writer turned avenging killer Jennifer Hills. And uh, she's going to be uh, a best selling author in New York with her daughter Christy, a model in New York. Unfortunately for the two of them, the events of that first film are about to affect both their lives, and then they end up dealing with the family members of the original rapists. So it's kind of a rapist reunion kind of thing. <laughs> rapist reunion. It's kind of like when the American Pie reunion, except with more cut-off penises. What have you been up to? Uh, rape. <laughs> Just rape. So when your dad was a rapist, I was raped. This is like six to six, six degrees of raping bacon. Raping bacon. <laughs> is that in the drinking game? Um, six it episodes. Will be next week now. <laughs> so I spit on your grave. Number one, I'm very curious to see what the woman from I spit on your grave looks like these days. She, feel, I feel like she's somebody we'd see at Chiller Theater signing autographs and be like, wow, she got old. I'm assuming she looks like Jessica Tandy towards the end. Yeah. Or, or uh, Jessica Tate was the redhead mom and, um, 
who's the boss. Oh my God. Well, uh, Hellman, Catherine Hellman. Catherine Hellman. She was in Soap. It's Jessica Tate. Um, I Spit on Your Grave is one of those movies that I'm like, look, if you're a horror fan and you're younger than us two, and you, Jason, have you seen I Spit on Your Grave, the original one? Of course. Yeah, like that's one of those ones. Like, you got to see that. You got to see Reanimator. You got to see I Spit on Your Grave. You got to see. There's some staples that you, you need to see, and I Spit on Your Grave is one of them. Um, it's one of those feel good movie of the set. you don't go back to. My wife was really excited to see that movie. I remember. <laughs> I should have been nervous. And what's the big trivia for that movie, Hunter? Oh, wasn't that girl like she was like a? <sighs> it has to do with the video cover. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's Demi Moore. Yeah. So the the butt, <laughs> the profile in the back of the of the video was based on Demi Moore's butt. Really, I didn't know that. Yeah. Mm, that butt still looks good. Yeah, so uh, if they re booty. See, that, the poster is always something that sticks out in my mind because the movie really bothers me, of course. But the poster I... bothered me too because I know what this movie's about, and there's the most incredible butt shot on the poster. And I'm like, damn it, whoever made this, you're all dicks. It's a great poster. It really is. Because it, we're suckers. We're doing, okay, I'll go watch it. <laughs> Yep. I saw that movie because of word in mouth, not because of word of butt. Butt of mouth. Did you see it for ass to mouth? <laughs> and silence. Lead balloon. Just Whatever. gonna let that one go. I'm not All right. touching it. Are you done, Jack? I am done. All right, good. Jason, you're up. Tell me, what'd you watch? What'd you do? Oh boy, what the hell did I watch? I went back on Shutter and I found this movie. I'd heard of it. I think, but I definitely never seen it called Hide and Go Shriek. They just mm. hit Shutter recently, I think. So I thought, oh, what the hell? I, I like going back and watching old slashers, even though they're almost always terrible, terrible movies. I'm just right. I get a nostalgic feel from them. And that's pretty much what this was. The acting is terrible. It's shot horribly. The writing's not very good. But if you like 80s slashers, and I'm a fan, it's worth a watch. <laughs> There's <laughs> some. Uh, some decent enough kills, I guess. Yeah, there's some decent enough nudity, I guess. So, you know, it exists. <laughs> if you like slashers, go watch Hide and Go Shriek. <laughs> I was okay. just put on today from, was it Audra on Twitter? We've about... all seen this, so we can spend some oh, time on it. Okay, mm -hmm. then uh, I'll save this until you guys get through yours and we'll all talk about it. <laughs> Thanks, new, Audra. A nice Nigel Bach film. <laughs> I watched The Last Lovecraft Relic of Cthulhu. This was on Amazon Prime. It's a horror comedy. Have you seen this, Jack? I've seen the thumbnail and I've almost clicked on it, so I'm dying to hear what you thought of it. It's one, I don't want to give it a bunch of crap because it's clearly a very tiny movie. It's a labor of love. It's got a couple cool creature effects it's got some effects that would make the sci-fi channel proud it's got <laughs> some funny bits it's got some bits that the comedy falls flat you know it's it's a movie um it's a movie. <laughs> you know it's one of those if if you get the humor if the humor is your thing you're probably going to like this you're probably going to like it significantly more than me some of the humor just kind of felt flat but again i don't want to give it much crap because the budget here was clearly very low, but there's some fun stuff in it. It was a labor of Lovecraft. Oh, is this the attack of the puns? Was it like three weeks ago? You were just on fire. Yeah, really. So I washed that down with Black Swan. After mm -hmm. having watched Mother, I wanted to go back, watch another Aronofsky film. Oh my God, this movie's such genius. It just blows me away. Natalie Portman's acting in this is just beyond anything else the guy knows how to get performances out of actresses i don't know what the hell he's doing on the set but these women absolutely kill it in his films i noticed a lot i hadn't seen this movie in probably five years i noticed a lot of things that he does tricky things in the mirrors and things like that that i dug the hell out of it's a solid movie sheridan i think everyone should watch black swan Are you guys fans it, of it it has oh, yeah. it has the scene yeah well <laughs> Yeah, it's got that scene. But the rest of the movie is really, it's amazing. It really is. It's a masterwork. If you guys haven't seen it. And P. 
people don't like to call it a horror movie, but I find this movie terrifying. Watching her slide into madness just is crazy to me. I absolutely yeah. consider this a horror film. And you're a pussy. <laughs> well, I am a pussy, but it's still a horror film. Look, if you had told me to go to the ballet, that's a straight up horror for me. <laughs> so other than that, I just have the uh, Nigel Bach to talk to you guys about. I'm good. Excellent. All right, Jack. Hit us. Hunter, I watched one of your favorite movies, or if not one of your favorite movies, a landmark movie in your life. Bright Lights, Big Titties? Yeah. On the Director's Cut DVD. Um, Oh, my God, my favorite. I watched 1972's Horror Express with Christopher (gasps) Lee, Peter Cushing, and Telly Savalas. Oh, my God. The only movie that scared the Jesus out of me as a kid. So... The, one of the great things about this is I always assumed this was a Hammer movie because Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing are in it, but actually it's not. They, they uh, This other company got them, and I don't know if I've ever seen this movie or the whole thing, but I'm just so familiar because you always talk about it. It's great. I mean, it, it's, it's fun to watch. It's so great how a, a 1970s movie, how quickly people just accept the occult in this movie. They're like, a murder happens, and then they're like, this, so this what happens is this expedition finds a frozen Neanderthal, uh, and they put it onto a train, and then murders start happening. And they're, at one point they're like, "Do you think that that frozen caveman has come back to life and is killing people?" And they're like, I, I, "It's the only thing I can think of that's causing these murders. Not like <laughs> there could be somebody on the train like, immediately." Like, of course. So, in the if you look at the photos or the the trailer for this you see some people with like white eyes or with red eyes and, and so in most movies like that effect would happen once or twice these guys go balls to the wall with this and there's a lot of creepy people with white eyes uh and, and they just they they hammer at home so it, this is a lot of fun this is a great retro movie to go back i'm really glad that i i took the time to go back and watch this one because again my memory so vague for some of these movies that i can't remember if I just read about them in a book or if I actually saw the movie when I was like 10 or something. Right. So very happy. And Telly Savalas just shows up like towards the end of the movie as like this suave and sexy, uh, like Russian soldier. Uh, that's so different from Christopher Lee and <laughs> Peter Cushing. He's like, Hey baby, what are you doing <laughs> on my train, baby? It's so great. What was the name of this? Horror Express. Oh, oh okay. You know, Hunter I think and I, I have on, on Monster Men. Uh, Hunter yeah. and I on Monster Men talked about movies that when we were really little scared the hell out of us. And I, mine was this movie, Let's Scare Jessica to Death, that I must have seen when I was like six years old or something. My right. dad had a fire going. We were watching something. And he goes upstairs to get some snacks or something. And I, I don't know if he was watching and I wandered downstairs. But anyway, little me just wanders in front of the TV and it's getting in front of this movie. And I'm just like, ah! And this was Hunter's uh, was Horror Express, and I can see why it would scare. If, if you were, if I was six years old and I saw this movie, I'd be terrified. You know, now I'm thinking those white eyes. I, I think I pooped myself when I was little, <laughs> and I st- still have a fear of eye stuff. I don't even look into people's eyes when they say, "Can you look? Do, do I have something in my eye?" I wonder if it all came from that movie. Holy that's, crap! That's weird. You just had a I think I just had a breakthrough. I, I gotta go. I gotta go touch eyeballs. I don't think I've seen that, but I have seen Let's Scare Jessica to Death not that long ago, actually. I'm going to watch that this October and probably laugh at how bad it, it is. It was slow, dude. Yeah. It was slow. Horror Express is on, it used to be on YouTube. There used to be actually it's, some decent versions on YouTube. It, it, I did not have to pay, so it's either on Shutter or Prime. Nice. Uh, I I did watch one on YouTube, though. I, I, got, uh, I got on sort of a kick of going back and finding older movies. So I went back and watched... 1971's Countess Dracula, mm. which is Ingrid Pitt. Now, this is a Hammer movie, oh. and this is one that I don't think I actually ever saw, but I want... Ingrid Pitt is one of the great screen queens of all time. She's gorgeous. She was voluptuous. She was terrifying as a vampire uh, back in those Hammer movies, and this is not the greatest movie in the world, but is worth watching just to celebrate her. She gets to to kick it into gear in this. And it's basically the Elizabeth Bathory story. Yep. So she's an older queen. She figures out that blood from a maiden can 
make her young, so she keeps <laughs> killing the having her her uh, sidekick kill these women and, and getting young. But then she starts to like bang this younger prince, and so the <laughs> other guy's in like the friend zone, and he's like in love with her and everything. And they just constantly go back to whenever she turns back into the old lady, it's always at the most inopportune moment. So there's always like that <laughs> thing. <laughs> It, it, so it gets kind of funny. It, it's on YouTube. I, I couldn't find it anywhere. I've been trying to track down a few Hammer movies lately, and some of them I just can't find anywhere. This one I tracked down on YouTube. Definitely was fun to watch. Uh, not the greatest movie in the world, but it had Ingrid, Ingrid Pitt. Pitt. Oh, there and, you go. And you see her, and you see her boobies. Yep. <laughs> and when you're done with that, go see her in The Vampire Lovers, where you see yes. everybody's boobies. How do we have <laughs> any female viewers at all? I have no they had boobies. <laughs> I guess everybody loves boobs. So. Everybody loves boobies. Uh, the last movie I have for us was this came in the mail, and I watched it yesterday. And tonight, after this, I'm going to watch the extras and deleted scenes. It's Mike Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two Blu-ray. Yay! Yay. So I popped it in last night, and uh, first of all, I love the Guardians of the Galaxy. I love this movie. I don't think this is as good as the first one, but I saw it several times in the theater. It's so much fun. Some of the jokes that when you've seen it a few times, maybe maybe there's a little bit of pacing uh, that makes it not as good as the first one, but they, they, this movie ev evokes laughs and emotion from <laughs> raccoons and little trees and crazy mm -hmm. aliens. It's it's funny. It's feel good, man. I I can't get enough Guardians of the Galaxy, and it looks spectacular on my TV on Blu-ray. Does it? it so yeah. it translates well to the small screen. Oh, it looked better on my TV than it did in the theater. Like it wow. looks huh. so vibrant. So I can't wait to watch like the making of and the deleted scenes and all that. And there's a video. David Hasselhoff did like an '80s retro video. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna devour all that stuff uh, after we're done. Awesome. Very nice. That's everything, Jack? That's it. All right. I'm going to go. I'm going to breeze through my movies because there was really nothing exciting. Uh, I went back and I watched one of my favorite Kate Beckinsale movies where she's not a vampire and blue, uh, Vacancy. Oh, I like Vacancy, actually. Vacancy is a solid movie. Um the, the, oh, who's the bad guy? I always He's from all those 80s movies. He is so... F Frank Whalen or whatever his name is, he was so skeevy as the motel owner. Frank Rizzo! Frank Rizzo, you bastard. Don't make me come down there. <laughs> I'll break my tool bag. <laughs> um, it's a solid... It's not a home invasion. It's a crappy motel invasion, but that's a solid movie, man. And... Kate Beckinsale is just, I'll watch her in anything. But it's nice to watch her in something that's actually good, and I can appreciate the movie itself. Who's the male lead in that? Luke Wilson. Luke Wilson, that's what I thought. Before he went back to college with Frank the Tank. One of the most Wilson. disturbing scenes in that movie for me is when I think they go up to the front desk and the guy's in the back room and you hear that horrible screaming. All the scream, yeah. Oh man, that creeped me out the first time I saw it. It's funny because when we watch that, my wife goes, she goes, that would be like our house. Like people hear that all the freaking time coming out of our That's house. When the Jehovah's Witnesses are knocking on my door. That's what they hear. <laughs> <laughs> they just keep going. <laughs> So I've seen it a couple of times. The first time I've seen it in a few years, and got, it, it actually gets better with age. I really dig that movie. I don't um, know that it did all that well when it came out, did it? Eh, I can't remember. I don't fair, remember people talking about it much. Fair to Midland, you know. Because, uh, I mean, it could be a horror movie. It could be a straight-up thriller. could be suspense. You know, kind of rides that line. Yes. The other movie I watch is on Netflix, Little Evil which is a horror comedy starring uh, Adam Scott from, uh, you all know him from Parks and Rec and just about everything else. And he marries a woman. He's her third or fourth husband. And he has, she has a son who looks like little Damien from The Omen, who happens to be the son of the devil. It's actually better than I thought it would be. It's not, you're not gonna bust a gut 
laughing at it, but you do get a few snickers with it. It's, it's well done. It's slick. It's not a cheapo uh, movie. It has a little heart, a little tenderness towards the end, and then it goes off the rails. Um, it's worth the watch, and it's on Netflix right now. It's a Netflix original production. It's cool. There's a couple of uh, professional comedians that play his friends in a support group for stepdads. His best friend is also a stepdad, but she also happens to be a, a lesbian. <laughs> She's a trip. So check out Little Evil. Have you guys seen Do you have it on your list yet? or We discussed this like a week or two ago when I watched it, you dumbass. Oh, whatever. See, there we go. You said pretty much the same thing he just said, right? Yeah. Just, it was decent. Uh, whatever. And then, and then we, I'll check the list next time. <laughs> then you suggested it be our featured movie, and we said we already talked about it. You really... No, I didn't say that. You are such a freaking liar. <laughs> I think the freaking pot next door is really your pot. <laughs> Do you kiss your mother with that lying mouth? <laughs> Did any of you see Avatar? Yes. What? Yes. Yeah, all right. Avatar? Yeah, your microphone made a lot of noises there. Avatar, right? Avatar, yes. It's a, it's a weird movie, man. It's like a film noir, modern day killer, surrealistic flick. I don't. I like the way it looked. I really loved the noir part in the beginning. These this couple kind of like people out of time, but then it just kind of it fell apart. Totally fell apart. But for the males in the audience, see it for Jessica Lowndes, who plays the reporter, who's the sister of a family that's murdered. She is a dime. She you is like, had me at Jessica Lowndes. I wasn't even paying attention until nine hundred two and zero. Do you know her from that? Oh no, I know her really well. I, I now that you said her name, I'm going to watch this. She, she's gorgeous, <laughs> straight up gorgeous. So it, watch it for her. Okay, those are my movies. Are you all ready for my very special book that I read? <laughs> yes, and then we have to talk about the other movie. Yes, yes. I, I just wanted to hear about this. I uh, well, thanks to Pam Morris, uh, she gave a book suggestion, and silly me, I went and bought it right away. <laughs> you <laughs> because dummy. you know, I couldn't resist. So the name of the book foot, uh, the book foot, the name of the book is "Gay Bigfoot: A Mouth Full of Sasquatch." <laughs> <laughs> now uh, I know no, that what was it you about? have to put like, well. Luckily, it's only seven pages long. Quick read. Basically, a dude in a tent who gets raped by a Bigfoot and in the middle of the raping realizes he kind of digs it and then they screw some more. So I know on YouTube you have to put E for explicit. You might need two E's. I don't know what we're going to need here. But just some random things that I found <laughs> in this book that Pam got me to read. Um, just, just so we know what we're in for when you buy this because you're going to buy it. It's part of a series. His seed pulled into my mouth as I swallowed, tightening my mouth around his cock. I couldn't keep up with the sheer volume. Hold on. <laughs> of beast jizz. Do you, do you think oh. this will be rated explicit on iTunes this week? I think so. He had a seemingly infinite supply of semen, and it kept flowing and flowing like a machine pumping beast cum down my throat. <laughs> I think he could have done better with that. We're we're just getting started. Like a, like like an ice cream machine pumping soft serve. Like, well, this is something that I've always wondered. Are you wondered. saying the writing in this is not good? I'm saying the writing is stupendous. I, I just uh, think he could have worked a little harder on that analogy. Oh, he's working very hard. <laughs> The large creature stopped tickling my balls suddenly, leaving me to catch my breath. I lay there, panting for a moment, looking up into Bigfoot's gorgeous eyes. Now, Bigfoot has gorgeous green eyes, by the you way. You should be the audiobook guy for this. I was just thinking that. I, look, this is, my, uh, this is my demo tape. This is not your first time reading this out loud. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I did read it out loud the whole time I was reading it at home. The dinner uh, table last night. <laughs> Oh my God, it was so unbelievable. Hold on, I'm not done. I'm not done. It's just my Kindle is so old. Now, does does a Bigfoot oh, have his... a foot fetish, or like if Rex no. Ryan was raped by a Bigfoot, would he love it because he has a foot fetish? <laughs> well, this is just a quick line. Oof, was all I could muster. 
it's hard to talk with a mouthful of Sasquatch. <laughs> so true. <laughs> uh, my dick is Bigfoot sex pet. And crawled above me, his giant uncut cock hanging down and entering my anus. Now, isn't that assumed? I mean, I don't think there's circumcised Bigfoots out there. Is there really a Bigfoot moil out there? He might be I Jewish. Think... He's a Jewish Bigfoot. I can't believe this. His yarmulke fell off in the middle. Now, here's this one. I, you might find this in Fifty Shades of Grey. Uh, I came further and harder than I ever felt in my life. My entire body shaking as cum poured out of our cocks, mixing together in a delightful mix of sweet, sticky, creamy cock smoothie. <laughs> All right, enough of this. <laughs> so that is Gay Bigfoot, which is book one. And there's another one. I, and a, I went down a rabbit hole of gay cryptid books. There is an endless supply of them. But Bigfoot gets the, but Mothman, Jersey Devil, Chupacabra, everybody's having gay sex with cryptids. Did you review it on Amazon? No. <laughs> I'm ashamed that it's on my account. I can't wait till they reboot the gay Bigfoot franchise. <laughs> That'll be, I spit on your Bigfoot dick. I spit on your Bigfoot. All I know is there is so much Bigfoot pineus in this movie. But it smells like pine because they're in the woods. <laughs> pine woods pine. That's an interesting smell. Oh my god! It sure is. So, any first-time listeners who just happened upon this podcast, sorry, and we'll never do this again. It'll be at least two uh, or three weeks. We will when I do Gay Mothman. So, get ready. <laughs> All right, now let's get into something less serious. <laughs> Nigel Box ridiculous Christmas special. <laughs> we're, we're, we're stepping down in quality. <laughs> uh, at least this book was seven pages. I was done in five minutes. Nigel, maybe endure 15. I'm not so, going first. Somebody go first. Well, Jack, Jack go first. Let's man. introduce this. Uh, our friend Audra this to, today on Twitter alerted us to the fact that the guy who made Bad Ben has like a 12-minute is it called the Zombie Santa or the Santa Zombie? Uh, zombie Santa? <laughs> the Santa Zombie. I got it right. The here. Santa there Zombie. You go. I just watched it an hour ago and already forgot. Uh, so it's a short film. Is film the right word for it? God. It's like Student an student film, extended YouTube video uh, where a, a mall Santa is bit by a infected kid and becomes a zombie and terrorizes his neighbors who are putting up their Christmas lights. And uh, it's... Uh, <laughs> really, Jack? It's... Uh, I don't know how he's getting stuff onto Amazon. Is there... What do you have you to do, do to get a movie now. on Amazon? Yeah, yeah, you, you can, can put do Final anything. Guys on there if we wanted to. Could we? Okay, that explains it. Jason and I put our crap on Amazon, so it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> True. Uh, listen, it, it's uh, great special effects. Uh, I really thought the themes were uh, impressive. It kind of had sort of an Aronofsky feel to it. With a lot of, you know, uh, religious symbolism. I was thinking more Fellini. Birth of Christ, commercialism, Birth. Christmas. Easter. Uh, Easter, yes. Uh, really, I think it's probably the most important film of our time, and uh, I would give it uh, two jingle five, bells. five trees, five. Hey, this movie taught five me that yule logs that in the Easter fire. Bunny is an asshole. That's what I learned in that movie. That that's my takeaway, which they stress several times in it. They set that up really well. I appreciate that Nigel Bach is still shooting films in this house, and I will continue to watch them. It's the Bad Ben house. It's Do you think goodness. he's under house arrest, and this is what he's doing to keep himself occupied? I don't know, and I don't care. Just keep doing it, man. Anybody who's in the cult of Nigel Bach, like we are, has to see this. Oh, yeah. You can't not see this. And don't wait till Christmas. You can see it now. I like to think that the Christmas season has kicked off thanks to this. 
the <laughs> effect at the end, spoiler alert, when someone gets hit by a car, is the greatest thing I've ever seen. Oh yes. my god. It's like a cardboard cutout. James Herbert flying in the eats air. your heart out. There's a lot of like Snapchat special effects in this. Yeah, you know, if Nigel is around and needs an animator, he should we should hook him up with uh, Jim Herbert. Yes. He would improve his graphics greatly. We should say he's clearly trying to make something silly and ridiculous here. And yes, it's one yes. of those if the comedy works, you're going to think it's funny. If it doesn't work, you're going to think it's the worst thing you've ever seen. I just love when he's walking out going, oh, my God, that's the bad Ben house. Oh, yeah. I was like, I know that kitchen. I know, I know that, that driveway. I know that treadmill. <laughs> and those garbage pails. I'm very acquainted with those garbage pails. There's so. some sexual innuendo or oh suggested. It gets there's a little some, racy. There's some magical earbuds that are in and out of the guy's ears between cuts. Yep. Well, so. that's so you could get a mix of the amazing score. That <laughs> shit is straight up John Carpenter right there. <laughs> Ah, oh, Nigel, I can't wait for Batter Ben. So let's uh, let's just tell people go watch this, and then I think it's time for the main feature. This will wet your whistle. All right, everybody, why don't we get on to the main feature? Uh, I will remind you all, those of us who are watching us live, know that we're live Tuesdays, seven p.m. Eastern time. Uh, you can find us at finalguys.com. You can download us on just about any way you can download a podcast. And just we encourage you when you do so, if you like us, tell us. Give us a thumbs up, a star, a rating, a review, whatever. We love you. Love us back. Long time. Love me. Okay. We are going, we went in the Wayback Machine as we're gearing up because for the next few weeks it's solid new releases uh, everywhere. So we trip back to what is one of my favorite movies of all time. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Toby Hooper's 1974 masterwork that built his entire career on. Does anybody want to, which one of you guys wants to handle the quick synopsis of the movie? If, if somebody doesn't know what this movie is about, what the fuck are you listening to us for? I can. I mean, it's, this is the easiest movie ever to describe. Go for it. Some, are they teenagers or in their 20s? Around 20? 20? 20s. Yeah, okay. They're driving in the road down a van. They pick up a weird dude. Then they stop at an abandoned house, and they start getting killed. Boom. That's the story. There There's you really go. nothing more to it. There is a <laughs> chainsaw massacre in Texas. No, there isn't. There's no chainsaw massacre in this movie. <laughs> That's the thing. There isn't. It's more well, of a you... hammer massacre. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's a blunt, dirty instrument massacre. I'm not sure four deaths counts uh, as a massacre in pretty much any way but you've been desensitized if you look if you had four friends who got murdered you bet that's a fucking massacre man Chainsaw just massacre. think about it this way though if the cops ever got to that house they would find evidence of more than just those four so that's true mm -hmm. that's where those faces come from so jack uh how many times have you watched it and what do you think or what do you still think i have not watched this movie that many times i enjoy it i saw it back in the 80s for the first time when I was in high school. <clears throat> and then I probably watched it like once since then. So it's been like 15 years since I've watched wow. it. Um, so it was really fun to go back and, and revisit it. And I forgot just how simple this movie is. <laughs> there was a few key moments that I was like really waiting for, like the first meat hook. The, the first appearance of Leatherface is one of the all time great moments in, in horror movies. And then just the, that the, the the old man with the like there's just certain things in this movie that was like oh yeah there it is uh, so I, I had a lot of fun going back and watching this oh, right my phone's going off um, so it's Leatherface calling you don't talk shit about yeah, me Jack yeah I, I just I'm really glad we picked this one I had a blast going back but it, there's certain things that I kind of forgot about that I can't wait to talk about with you guys because there's a lot of funny stuff in this movie <laughs> yeah there is. J Jason, Jason, Jason. It you hadn't like seen it in a long time. You almost together. called me Jizz. When you, said, when, <laughs> you can't get gay Bigfoot out of your head. I almost called you Sass Jizz. That's how I mix it up. I also hadn't seen this movie in a long time. It legitimately might have been 20 years since I last saw this. I watched it several times in high school. I was one of those people who thought this movie was crazy. It was so intense and so so gory. And upon going back, it's not gory at all. And when I looked it up, 
good old Toby Hooper was trying to get a PG rating with this film. But it's what? still super... Think about it. I mean, what gore is in this? There's almost none. You see nothing in this movie. Yeah, you're right. It just but seems so, dirty. Yes, it's gore. so weird and intense, and there's so much screaming and oddness and crazy shit going on that it feels like a crazier movie than it is. Now, this is an actual good, entertaining movie, so did you like it? Cause... Oh, of course. Of course. Okay, this that's is considered a classic. Yeah, this isn't... Uh... For a reason. Yeah. No, I, I love this movie. It There's some things I want to talk about with you guys, too, that certain things that haven't aged as well, and I, I, it almost feels like it's two movies to be. Some of these shots in this are so impressive. Everyone loves the under the swing shot, and you know, there's so many great things like that. When Leatherface first shows up and opens Slams the that door, door. Oh. oh, man, the way he set all that up was incredible. And then some of the stuff in the van at the beginning, I'm like, this looks like a student film. It's... It looks like a Rob Zombie movie. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's a mess in the beginning. But even the stuff that looks poor added to some of the creepiness. Like the stuff in the van was... I was watching it just thinking, man, am I losing my mind or is this not very good? But as the scene goes, it gets creepier and creepier with that guy they pick up and, and it works. It right. completely works. So yeah, I love this movie, of course. I was surprised having viewed it that it's not nearly as gory by any means mm. as what I expected. Right. I agree. Uh, I watch it uh, every year, maybe every other year. I didn't come to this movie. Like, Jack, you watched it in high school. I don't think I saw it till college. It was a hard-to-find movie in my area. It was, in fact, every time the video store would get it, somebody would rent it and never bring it back. <laughs> so there was just this demand to just see it, own it, Fuck the video store. They don't get it. I, I love the movie. I, comp I, I compare a lot of modern horror movies to that because where I see their failing is as imperfect as it is, it's perfect. It's so gritty and so raw and so damn dirty. It's like the floor of a peep show booth, that kind of grit and dirt. And you just feel icky watching it. You feel like you're watching something you shouldn't watch. And it still holds up for me. Every time I put it in, it holds up, man. From the the that's the snapshots that that gets nipples hard every time, and that strange ass family and the kid just love the flick. So, and if anybody wants to fight me on that, I'll fight you at Murphy's Law Bar in Yonkers. <laughs> is there anyone who actually doesn't like this movie? I guarantee there is. Guarantee. I don't know if any of our live listeners don't like it, but I'd be surprised. I think Rob Zombie should remake this movie. <laughs> Jesus Christ. The and, thing and, is, none of the sequels to this movie <laughs> ever came close to the grittiness and the the real feel of this movie. No, because they were all bigger budgets and slicker. You had Dennis Hopper. You've had uh, Matthew, Matthew McConaughey. McConaughey Renee this Zellweger. actually feels like it was taken on like a super eight camera and somebody found it like it you're almost there are times where you're like holy crap i'm watching something that really happened whereas uh, every other movie you're like oh this is clearly a movie set or whatever right with actresses and and all that and leatherface himself is just this lunatic <laughs> with the woman's his skin over his face and like a little blubbering freak and it's so scary and you know and you know later iterations of him he turns into like a jason hulking thing like and he just seems like a genuine crazy person like that they yeah he gets really big <laughs> after 2000 all the movies he gets enormous at least this is it's more believable yeah and he seems like somebody who escaped from a mental institution and you know and by the way everybody the guy who played leatherface was the great gunner hansen who passed away a couple of years ago. A little bit of trivia. Born in Reykjavik, Iceland. Hmm. Ooh. Who is in some of the worst horror movies you will ever watch in your life. Uh, you know, he's got to do what he's got to do. He's in one <laughs> we're doing on So Bad It's Good coming up called Mosquito. It's brilliant. Ooh. Brilliant movie. Yes. Hope it's as good as Mansquito. You know, I, I think <laughs> Mansquito. <laughs> I saw that one, actually. I love that movie. <laughs> I think this movie's sequels and the remakes and everything suffer from what we were just talking about, that there isn't a whole lot of gore in this movie. 
it's just intense and it's like they watched it and felt like they had to show the gore in order to get that same vibe and I don't know that they were understanding what made the first movie so intense and the fact that this new one apparently is the origin story of Leatherface don't do that yeah nobody don't, needs to didn't you watch Silence of the Lambs didn't you learn from what those movies did you don't explain these guys it's scarier when you don't know why well, didn't they scary. watch Rob Zombie's Halloween did we need to see the origin of Michael Myers who also became so big he was not even human it's well, funny saying Rob Zombie because it, it Rob Zombie clearly tries to take the look of this movie in his yes. movies. The, the Devil's Rejects and all that all feel like they came from the same camera that shot oh, this movie. Absolutely. And I think he goes, well, they couldn't act, so I could put my wife in this because she can't act. And they made a classic out of it. The lead woman in this movie may scream more than anybody ever in any movie. <laughs> she really does, man. She's got a good set of pipes, Marilyn Burns. It, it's a little family guyish at points. It's like, I think that's what makes the ending really intense. It's just her nonstop screaming. But at the same time, I started turning the volume down a little bit. I'm like, okay. Wow, you didn't want to like blast it out the windows like vacancy? <laughs> it's like, oh, here comes the Scientologist. Let me turn it back up. You know, she passed away too a couple of years. We don't have many people left of uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Toby Hooper's gone. She's gone. Is the guy in the wheelchair? Talk about the most. Franklin? Yeah. Oh, my God. I was so happy when he died. He is dead. He died in 2005 at age 58. I'm not happy the real guy's dead, but the character. <laughs> you go literal with it. <laughs> he was so annoying. Oh, my God. Didn't you want. Oh, my God. He was so freaking irritating. When he gets cut in the van. That's. <laughs> His oh, acting yeah. in this movie is unbearable. It's so bad. And I love it. I don't know why I love it. It just hits all the right notes for me. And even I love if they're they, clunky notes. They kind of dispose of him relatively quickly. Like, a lot of people die fast, and then, like, the one girl survives. Almost like you were saying, there's, like, two halves to this movie. Right. Um, one of the things that I kind of never thought about, because I've really only seen it a few times, is the, the proximity in which everything happens. Because... They, they're basically going to a house that one of their relatives owns that's like an abandoned house and they pass by a gas station that serves barbecue and then they wander into their neighbor's yard and their neighbors happen to be Leatherface. So, and then when they're running, they end up back at the barbecue place. And so <laughs> the whole thing happens like within a mile. Um, they, just, they just happen to like have a house in the worst neighborhood possible. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's just crazy. Well, I think the budget of this was only like $60,000 or something when they started shooting it. It was yeah. really low. Look, you don't need a big budget to make something that has an impact. Not when you know what you're doing. Mm -mm. I mean, honestly. So, yeah, what, what I was saying before about it feeling like it was two different movies, it was really crazy. It was really interesting when I was watching it. Because I really did keep... I was thinking, like, this feels like it was shot like by two different people at times. Um, it might have been. Because I was going back and I was looking at Toby Hooper's, his oeuvre, and mm -hmm. he, the guy doesn't have a lot of movies that are good. It Honestly, it surprised me because I've always thought of him punch as Punch you in the mouth and your full lips. Give, name me one, Life other Force. than the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, that was a great Life Force. Movie. Life, Life Force, Force is not a great movie. Poltergeist? It's a fun movie. The Fun House. He didn't direct Poltergeist, though. That's come out. I, I don't know. Maybe maybe I, I, I've maybe. heard opposite. I just listened to somebody who an interviewed who was actually on the set. He directed it. Yeah. The cinematographer just said like a couple months ago that, yeah, it was Steven Spielberg. So. So, yeah, uh, the fun house to me, it's that's one of my favorite movies in the 80s. I like fun house a lot, too. It's it's not the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, though. I'm not shitting on the guy. Don't get me wrong. I yeah, like kind of his are. movies. Uh, and I'm Jack's saying, favorite. Salem's Lot. That's right. You dork. That's oh it. God. This you show know, is I'm, over. I'm not so, gonna lie. Why don't you I don't go like back Salem's and Lot. go back and watch an Aronofsky movie instead of a Toby Hooper movie? You freaking oh, I, I would. little film student. Do you guys actually like Salem's Lot? Have you seen it? I like, love Salem's Lot. Sa Jack loves Salem's Lot. Oh, you can't that mess him. Sinfully that. boring. Just like the book. <laughs> Turn in your card for your horror card. You know what? Go watch Black Swan again. You freak. I do agree. The book is boring. That the book's boring. The book's boring too. 
It's just I'm not a I'm not a fan of either one of those. Mm. I need Rebecca, to get through Rebecca the watch the mummy. The <laughs> I would watch the the mummy before I watch Salem's Lot. Oh, I, I definitely have to reboot this horror podcast. You have all <laughs> seen the end this. of Final Guys. This is not going. You're this so will bad not at horror. It's actually I don't even remember Salem's Lot that much. <laughs> the dude will not abide. I'm just trolling Jack. <laughs> It's the problem is it's true though you're terrible at this. Pick a different genre. <laughs> Go watch the fountain. Yo, you know what? I, I really like the TV movie. The book to me it, it takes two hundred pages before it clicks into any kind of gear, and then it, it's really good. The book's one of my least favorite Stephen King books. Honestly, just because it's so slow. You never read Lysy's story? Oh God, that's one of my least favorite Stephen King books. It's one of my least favorite books. Yeah. Honestly, I don't remember the TV movie that much, but it's not Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So what else don't you like about Toby Hooper? Uh, honestly, the only movies of his I can even think of are Funhouse, Poltergeist, Life Force, this, and The Mangler. The Mangler. I've never seen The Mangler. <laughs> yep. Come on, people. That's a so bad it's good. He also did Toolbox Murders, which actually wasn't a bad movie. That's an 80s classic. Plus, he did, uh, oh, my God, he did Freddy's Nightmares. He did an episode of that. Uh, he did Amazing that. Stories. He did a lot of work with Steven Spielberg. I remember people, his work in TV more than uh, some of his movies, to be honest. Right. People talk about how, like, you know, Spielberg took the movie away from him and didn't trust his ability and everything. But if that was the case, he wouldn't have kept hiring him again and again and again. He also had that great candy, Toby Lerones. Toby, Jesus, mother of God. What was the Masters of Horror episode he did? I don't remember. Ooh. He did one, didn't he? I'm pretty sure. Had, he did Tales from the Crypt. I remember that. Oh, Masters of Horror, he did two. He did The Damned Thing and Dance of the Dead. Which I would love to get Damned that whole Dead. set on Blu-ray. I don't remember Damned of the Dead. But anyway. I don't know how that turned into me shitting on Toby Hooper. I'm actually... I, what I life forces the shit. What else? <laughs> Your life force is awesome, man. <laughs> the nudity and that's amazing. Oh, that's a, as a teenager, that was it. That was porn. That was porn before we had hands on porn. Before you had your Bigfoot stuff. <laughs> My pinus. So anyway, what I was getting at 15 minutes ago before we got off track is that <laughs> the stuff in the van feels completely different than some of the stuff in the house. Once Leatherface shows up, it really feels like a different film. And there's some, there's some cool stuff in it. I think the movie actually uh, changes gears when they have the family, once they get to the barbecue place and the guy is revealed to be evil and takes her back to the house and now suddenly you've got a dinner party with the crazy he, family, that's he, where the movie changes gears. And he knocks her unconscious with the broom. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then I'm telling you, my, when the first time I saw this movie, my favorite part of this whole movie was when you think that the father is like dead or something and then... It's all of a sudden he starts sucking on her finger and you're like, holy crap, he's alive. Oh, yeah. Did you guys watch an HD version of this? I watched I have, whatever yes. Amazon Prime had. I did not remember the old man's makeup being that bad. And I wasn't sure if it's just because it's the first time I've seen it in high def. Yeah, yeah, it's not meant to be watched in high def. Yeah. It's meant to be watched in very low I've noticed a lot def. of movies pre-80. Once you watch them in high def it's like ooh, some of that makeup was not meant for high definition no, no. a long time ago i was in a like a real fun house like professional thing and i was different things each night and one night i had to sit in a room where i had like that exact mask on and it was like this old man sitting in a chair next to a mannequin of a woman and i had a similar mask and there was a, a mechanical hand in a box like thing and they just played the Adams Family music over and over again, and people would come up and think that I was a mannequin, and then I would jump up at them, <laughs> and <laughs> it was hotter than hell in that thing. But all I could think of was like, "Oh my God, I look like the guy in Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This is awesome." <laughs> you know, this is something that happens to me now. Whenever I watch the the whole barbecue thing, I keep waiting for Captain Spaulding to make an appearance, and again, it's bleeding. It's Rob Zombie take so much from this movie that I just expect him to be like, you know, Rudy fucking duty and just being all dirty, clowny, strange. <laughs> Disco cutie. Oh my God. And they stole that. It's all coming full circle. Full circle jerk. Also, one of the great things that struck me about this movie was the, the first time you see Leatherface, he comes out 
grabs that person, throws her on the meat hook. Mm. Oh my god! Then he comes. Kind of, that first of all, the sliding door. You're just like, what am I seeing here? It was so creepy and weird. And then it is not. It's not. The, the chainsaw is incidental in this movie. He kills like two people with like a hammer and a meat hook. Like, right. The chainsaw is just there for him to swing around at the end. <laughs> when he's yeah. kind of pissed off. Uh, and those are so just brutal and fast murders that happen. And it's just this crazy guy's like, you know, got the person hanging and he's cutting up the other person. And you're just like, wow, this is, this was like raw horror. This is why it caused so many, so much controversy when it came out. Cause it just was brutal. So you didn't need the actual blood. The, the violence that was happening was just so real. And they were in a pile of chicken fe- uh, feathers and bones and stuff like that. Like you were saying, it looked like Lorraine Warren's house. <laughs> and it did uh, show us in uh, Technicolor that if you were in a wheelchair, you were going to have a hell of a time trying to survive a, a massacre because, I mean, it was almost impossible to just wheel around the terrain, much less try to get away. Apparently in the 70s, if you're in a wheelchair, you're going to have a hell of a time taking a piss on the side of the road because you're going to fall <laughs> down a bank about 50 yards. <laughs> That was so funny. <laughs> I do have to say the scene when Leatherface first shows up to me is one of the best scenes in a horror film ever. From the time he shows up and hits the guy with the hammer and when he slams that door shut, it is the perfect exclamation point on that scene. It's perfect. You got to have that. Now you have to have that door in any movie that they do with that because it's it's as iconic as he is. Absolutely amazing sequence. <laughs> the girl in the freezer. There's so much good stuff in there. Tell you this, what freaked me out and still does is when they pick up that hitchhiker, and just as he gets weirder and weirder, pulling crap out of his bag and burning shit, pictures and tin foil. I'm like, oh my god, that's like my worst nightmare. People just being trapped with people like that. <laughs> Which maybe I shouldn't be a horror author. I also love when they've got the girl in the house, and then they're trying to let the father kill her. So the guy keeps putting the hammer in the father's hand. Bump. And he keeps missing her. Bump. <laughs> Oh, uh, that was so great. It was that whole scene. And then I didn't even realize, like, the lamp over the table is like a face. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> like, there's so much uh, to look for in the background. And that's where, you know, like, when Buffalo Bill's lair, you know, in Silence of the Lambs, when they go down, if you watch sure. that, every time you're watching the movie, you're looking in the background for what kind of creepy stuff is there. And that totally took its cue from that house. There's so much in Texas Chainsaw Massacre that everybody has picked the bones of that movie clean and has just integrated it. It's all it's part of the DNA of horror movies now. Movies it's actually like one that. of these that's been analyzed to a point that's preposterous, kind of like The Shining. There's all these theories about it being about vegetarianism and crap. Like, get the fuck out of here. Dude, you knew it was Toby Hooper and a bunch of guys and girls out there in the heat just trying to make a fucking scary movie. That's and all it was. The great thing is if you made a list for a, a newbie or, you know somebody who's not at the horror movie said oh it's october what are the horror movies i should watch and you said okay watch the exorcist watch the shining the thing alien well you know american world from london and you go through and each movie has its own personality this movie would totally stand out in the field of classic horror movies because it there there's some things that became formula thanks to this movie or maybe you are trope familiar tropes but there's nothing it just is raw and in your face and simple as this one yeah you know in my house we call it forbidden fruit it's the it's the thing which you should not pick up and put into your your player because it just seems it seems real there's a realness and a rawness to it that you don't get in just about any movie maybe last house on the original last house on the left that kind of has that same vibe. I spin on your grave to a lesser extent. Yeah, good point on those two movies. But you know what it is? Those are those movies aged harder and are harder to watch. Like you can, you and I can watch them. But if you gave a newbie those movies, they they're gonna have trouble getting through those movies. The, the pacing's weird on them. There's, the tone in Last House on the Left gets so bizarre with the uh, weird yeah. music and the kind of comedy that comes in there. Last oh House on the Left is one of those movies to me that. If you're a horror fan, you everybody needs to watch. But it's not one I don't know that I'll ever go back to again. I'm not a huge fan of it. It's iconic for what it did at the time and for what it meant. But, you know, it's not I one of my favorites. It. 
the, you know, the remake isn't that bad. Yeah. It's one of those that was kind of an improvement in a way. Actually, the, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre reboot with Jessica Biel isn't half bad. By the way, uh, Jack said reboot, so you all better yes. drink. If anyone is is capable of drinking still. I did that on purpose. Could be a uh, nice shot. You know, Jessica Biel is far more pretty and put together, but they they, they really uh, kind of pick up the grime uh, of the uh, original, like, the, and I think. They try. Yeah, they try. The I, grime, but not the grittiness, if that makes sense. You know what you need the grittiness for? You, when they film it, take that the film itself and just skip it across the sand let it rain on it for a while just dirty the actual celluloid itself up and then show it do it like they did on grindhouse <laughs> yeah I, I'm, there's a reason for that man when stuff is too if it looks too clear uh, the lighting is just right but it looks dirty you know they, they made it the room look dirty but it's such in clear contrast everything it kind of loses that feeling that's why I don't know, man. Crappy film. There's one other thing I wanted to make sure I got in, which I totally forgot about. So at the end of the movie, the girl gets out of the house. She's running away. Leatherface has cut himself with the chainsaw accidentally at one point. Has has he at this point? I forget. But he, he runs out, and a truck comes, and there's like a black guy. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Foster rescuer. <laughs> I wanted to mention this too. And the first thing I thought of was in Caddyshack when Rodney Dangerfield's got the boat and there's a dude fishing and he's coming at him with the boat and the guy's like, <laughs> <laughs> it was like this. It's like this guy's cousin. Um, <laughs> that is, I that was something I totally forgot about. There's this rando guy that Leatherface is like hitting his truck and stuff. The girl gets into a pickup truck and is rescued. And you never know what happened to that guy. He's on foot going the other way. For all you know, Leatherface got him. And he is not fleet of foot. Well, that guy is an idiot. He's about <laughs> 150 pounds out of shape. He's in a car that Leatherface's chainsaw won't go through. And he gets out and tries to run his fat ass away. And it's just, that's it. That's all you see of him. You look like 200 pounds of chewed bubblegum, boy. <laughs> Luckily, Leatherface also doesn't look like he's going to win any marathons. Although, that guy... He does his cardio or something because Leatherface was running a lot. I'm like, there's no fat guy that's keeping up with that girl in a foot race, especially carrying a chainsaw. I mean, we assume Leatherface eats a lot of liver. Liver's very fatty. It's very fatty organ meat, minerally. But I guess, you know, he does enough cardio chasing chicks around the old the old Sawyer house to keep that, himself That was a shape. long run, and he heard a lot of screaming. He was probably pretty tired at that point. <laughs> and he does a lot of screaming, too. A lot of weird... High Watching that truck driver run screaming. at the end, I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> what is this guy doing? <laughs> oh, my God. Love that movie. I'm so happy we watched it. I, I, yeah, it's too. been too long. So what would you – how would you rate this, Jack? Oh, five out of five. If this came back to the theater, I would go see it again. This is one of those – every horror fan should have seen this clearly already, but if you're – you know, you got to be careful with the the normies that you show this to. But this is one of those classic horror movies that everybody should see. And it's it's just it's a goofy, weird, brutal movie that I thoroughly enjoy. And it was great to go back and watch it and not be like, eh, it's kind of aged a little bit. It's I didn't find problems. Like there's amusing things in it, but man, just two thumbs up, five stars, ten chainsaws, six. Racks of ribs, whatever the highest rating is. <laughs> 47 out of 47 Bigfoot Pinuses. Maybe that too. <laughs> what do you, Jason, what do you give it? It's an all time classic. If you're going through 10 horror movies to give to a newbie that they need to watch, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is in those 10. Is it my favorite one that I'm going to go back and watch every year? No. But is it amazing particularly for the time period and the money and what it created yeah all-time classic i don't i've honestly never talked to anyone who thought otherwise so i would be curious if there's i mean i'm sure there's some idiot on twitter out there but other, <laughs> other than that guy oh yeah. i have to tell you guys something yes so the, the day i watched this i accidentally did the greatest texas double feature of my life earlier that day at the end of the day in the office 
we have a large screen TV, and we popped in Pee Wee's Big Adventure. <laughs> Watch that, and then later at night, I'm watching Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and all of a sudden, I'm like, the stars at night are big and bright, deep in the heart of Texas. What? I remember the Alamo. I'm like, oh my god, I just watched the two greatest Texas movies ever. So that's that's awesome double feature, man. When it hit me, I was so I tweeted about it. Invite the kitties. What did you think of this movie, <laughs> Mister? I have a Texas Chainsaw Massacre stand up in my house. I do. I got lots of Leatherface stuff. I I love it, man. I love that movie to death. I watch it as much as I possibly can. So it's it like like Jason said, it's a classic. If you're gonna pick ten foundational horror movies to watch that's definitely in the mix so big thumbs up separate thumb put a thumb up your ass whatever um so that does it for texas chainsaw massacre next week we are skipping over to netflix and we are going to watch stephen king's gerald's game starring carla gugino jack to your growl <laughs> love it so we're going to uh, watch a poor woman get chained to the bed and have all sorts of horrible stuff happen to her. I'm interested to see how they do this movie. So that'll be next week, live, 7 p.m. Tuesday, Eastern Time. We'll be here. You'll be there. And finalguys.com. Finalguys.com. There's something else. What? Something more important we're also oh, watching. No, we shouldn't tell them. We uh, I guess we should. All right. Better Ben. That's right. Oh! Mm, I've been waiting so long for this. Two movies for one. Oh, Gerald's game. God damn it, Gerald. God damn it. You just totally broke up for me, and then you came back with God damn it. That's all I got. Me That's too. All you need. That's perfect. That's all you need. <laughs> so, double feature next week. Get ready. Gerald's game and Better Ben. And that's all we have, folks. So, whoever watched live, God help you. Go see a doctor. I'm sure you're liver is weeping and your bladder and everything else i don't know why you stayed the whole time (laughs) i don't know why you watch us at all but thank you and we appreciate it and folks like us love us rate us review us please god bless wubba wubba bye